Razer Cortex makes some big promises. They say they can unlock your PC's full potential. How do they do that? They have a game booster, which is designed to, while gaming, shut down background processes that you don't need while you're gaming to free up CPU and RAM. Very interestingly, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to test this out, they claim that they have their Booster Prime, which can automatically streamline your PC's performance and visuals for supported games thanks to an advanced AI with a machine learning algorithm that calculates the best settings based on your preferences. That's interesting. It has a few other features. They claim to have a system booster, which can take your PC optimization one step further with a one-stop solution that automatically detect and delete junk files to free up space. I'm not really gonna do that part of this review, to be honest, because I think that's more just about finding junk download stuff to like free up hard drive space. I'm not too interested in that myself. They're also gonna offer you deals. It looks like it has a tool built in where it can shop a bunch of different stores for different games to find the best sales available and all of that. And they have um, a, a way to earn their own currency while you're gaming and using their system to get basically loyalty points that you can use to redeem exciting rewards. Exciting, depending on you know your personal <laughs> thoughts on that, such as Razer Gear games and more. And um, there, there's a few other little things uh, popped in here as well. But to be honest, in this review, I'm gonna mostly focus on the Game Booster and the Booster Prime. Although I will show you at least a few of these other features. Now, if you're wondering, is this a virus or something? This it, Razer's a, a trusted company here. This did not trigger any kind of virus uh, alerts for me. And I've looked up other reviews and people and nobody seems to have had any issues with this actually causing problems on their PC. Now, let's go ahead and show you the program itself. So you can download it from their website, go through a pretty simple installation, and here we go. This is what the program actually looks like. Let me uh, show that to you. So, uh, the Game Booster, can enable CPU cores, uh, some kind of, says that it's gonna make them focus more efficiently on gaming. It can disable sleep mode. It can turn off automatic updates while you're gaming. It can enable game power solutions, clear your clipboard, clean up some RAM, and all of that. Now, you can set it to auto boost when you launch games. So basically, when you start up the game, it's going to do all of this, but when you turn the game off, it'll turn all of that off. So currently it's detecting 23 items on my PC that it can boost. Now, does that actually work? Well, I'll show you some footage edited in here right now with me comparing this on Red Dead Redemption 2. I ran the benchmark and used MSI Afterburner to monitor my CPU and GPU and RAM usage. And to be honest, it actually ended up performing better with the game boost off. Now, I only ran the benchmark once and the results were fairly similar, but um, the average was a little bit better with the game booster off and just the Razer program turned off. And I think in some places we even see the RAM usage actually higher with the game booster on. Now, the only reason I could imagine for that happening is because the Razer program itself is running in the background, so it turns off all of these other things, but it is running in the background, and it wasn't running in the background when I was um, just running the other benchmark uh, for comparison. So as far as the game boost goes, I'm gonna call this thing a bit of a loss, but I will say that if you're on a older PC where you're actually limited by your CPU or your RAM, I mean, you could download this thing for free and try it out and see if it gives you better performance. Um, I think on a higher end system, the amount of RAM and CPU space that can be cleared up by a tool like this isn't very significant. Notice that I'm GPU bottlenecked in this game. So if you're GPU bottlenecked, none of the things that this is boosting can actually improve your GPU performance. So the only place where this could potentially help you is if your CPU or RAM bottlenecked on like an older system 
and then maybe it could do something. But again, according to what I'm seeing here, running the Razor program itself in the background might be worse than just not running it at all, despite the boosting it can do. Although if you leave your PC with a whole bunch of junk running in the background that you don't need, maybe this could identify more stuff and end up being worth it for you. All right, let's go ahead and look at what I'm more interested in here, which is the Booster Prime. So the Booster Prime is claiming to be using some kind of machine learning algorithm and AI solution in these supported games to give you really optimal settings. Now, I just don't think it's gonna work. Now, first of all, I'll just comment that at least right now, the game library is really, really not great. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 supported games right now. And of these games, I really only have, like, this is personal preference, but I really only play PUBG, don't play that much anymore. I played Cyberpunk. I did play some Valorant there for a while when it first came out. I played Overwatch years ago. So depending on, you know, what games they're playing, it looks like they're targeting a lot of, like, competitive online stuff plus Cyberpunk. Now, for the purposes of benchmarking, it could make sense to use something like Cyberpunk, since I can, you know, it's single player, I'm not dealing with some online stuff and all of that. So let's go ahead and see what it does to Cyberpunk. Now, one thing I like here, let me get myself out of the way. Um, one thing I like here is that it gives you a predicted FPS output, and it, um, it also then has a slider here, where it's showing, okay, right now it's predicting based on the current settings that I have in the game, that we would be getting 71 frames per second with a plus or minus nine, probably dep depending on the scene you're at in the game. It's uh, guessing that if we enable it, we are going to jump down to its default competitive settings, which it claims are reducing unnecessary special effects and improving gameplay settings, will make it easier for you to find enemies and give yourself an edge in the competition. Okay, well, apparently that's going to jump us to 35 plus or minus four, which sounds horrible to me. Now, it'll highlight in green what it's changing, and it's saying that it's going to turn on ray tracing, which is gonna be disastrous to performance. Um, it's going to uh, wow, it's going to do a lot here. It's going to turn my screen space reflections down from ultra to high. That's fairly reasonable. Motion blur down from high to low. That's fairly reasonable. Uh, contact shadows uh, on to off. Mirror qualities from high to low. Color precision down to medium. Okay, so the biggest thing here that I'm noticing is it's planning on turning on ray tracing, which sounds disastrous to me. Uh, but let's go ahead and actually do that. I'm on an RTX 2070. Um, it, it doesn't handle ray tracing super well unless we use a lot of DLSS. Notice this is what happens. It's doing its little game booster thing. That's so it is activating the game booster. And we can go ahead and start up Cyberpunk and, and see what happens. Okay, so I actually just cut a little chunk of the video here because you know what I didn't do? I didn't click the optimize button. So to be clear, once you've selected your, your option here, it doesn't actually apply it to the game until you click optimize. Now I'm going to click optimize, okay? So we've clicked optimize and now we're gonna jump into the game and see what happens. Okay, so here we are in the game using their optimized competitive settings. Whoa, okay, I can instantly notice something that's a really big deal to me right now, which is, yes, ray tracing is on. You can see these nice mirrored reflections here that wouldn't be here, or at least wouldn't be as nice without ray tracing. But check this out. Um, do you see all this artifacting in the, uh, in the pavement lines here? All that shimmering? That only happens if DLSS is turned on. And I can tell based on the generally um, not very sharp look of the game right now that DLSS is on a very aggressive setting. Let's go ahead and open up the menu. And the reason I'm mentioning that is it didn't tell us it was turning on DLSS. So anyway, we're opening up the menu and sure enough, it looks like it has done what it said it was going to do. 
Ah, I'm right. Look, they've set DLSS all the way down to performance, which is way below the setting that I would ever use on a uh, on a 1440p game. Other than that, it does seem to have done what it said it was doing. It was turning on ray tracing and stuff. And now, to be honest, if you're going to use ray tracing, you really do need DLSS on my RTX 2070. But um, man. I can definitely tell that we're, that we're there. Now, even with the DLSS all the way down to performance, I'm still only getting performance in the 40s. Now, granted, I'm recording with OBS right now, so we would actually be getting a few frames per second higher if we didn't have the overhead from my recording setup. But I can tell you right now that I'm not a huge fan of these settings. So um, let me compare this with what I would do. If I had just opened up Cyberpunk and was trying to get good settings, what I would have done is I would have just defaulted to Ultra with ray tracing off and then um, monitored what sort of performance I was getting. Notice my performance isn't great. I'm in the low 40s, high 30s. By the way, here's what these reflections look like without ray tracing. You still get a reflection here. It's just not quite as nice of a mirror image, but that to me is not worth the massive performance hit. Notice because DLSS is off now, everything looks a little bit sharper. And if we jump over here, you can see that we don't get quite as uh, anywhere near as much shimmering in these pavement lines. So um, by the way, if you're not familiar with DLSS, it turns down your rendering resolution in the game to make it easier to run, but then um, increases, uh, tries to upscale it using an AI algorithm. And it's only supported on certain NVIDIA graphics cards, the 20 series and higher, the RTX cards. Anyway, so if I was trying to get this game to work, I would say, okay, because I have an RTX card, and I think this is fair because the program was using it, I would now just set DLSS to quality and see what happens. Let's see what happens just by doing that. Okay, so by setting DLSS to quality and leaving, um, leaving ray tracing off, notice that my frame rates are now around 60 frames per second. They're in the upper 50s. And I can guarantee you, because I've tested these settings before, I actually played with them for much of the game, I can tell you that if I wasn't running the OBS recording right now, I would be in the mid 60s in terms of frame rate. So this would be absolutely good. And this is one of the more demanding areas of the game due to the, the crowds and the traffic. Now, I believe that they have the crowd density down to medium here um, uh, as one of the settings that they did. Now, I think that my computer could actually handle, if I remember where this, where this shows up, I think we could actually handle crowd density at high just fine without having a, a big impact to the frame rates we're getting here. Now, let's go ahead and check. So I've now turned the crowd density up to high. You can tell that the city feels more lively with the higher crowd density. Um, it's not a huge difference, but again, my frame rate seems fairly similar to when it was at medium. And like I said, if I didn't have the recording overhead, I think these would be the settings I would use. Overall, I think this looks much better and I get much less of the noticeable artifacting from the DLSS. No, I don't get ray traced reflections. So these reflections aren't quite as mirrored. But for me, this turning everything else up and having less of the DLSS artifacting um, is much, much preferred. OK, so overall, I have to say that I am not at all a fan, at least in Cyberpunk, of their recommendations. Let's jump out of the game for a second and um, hop back in to the Razer Prime thing. What would they have done if we had dropped down to more of a balanced setting? Oh, wow, this is awful. Look at this. OK, so by going down to balanced, they're still leaving ray tracing on. They're still leaving ray tracing on down to balanced. And you know, and they're turning down things that make no sense. They're turning my tech, the textures, which is gonna be extremely obvious, they're turning them down from high to low. This is a terrible decision. That is a terrible decision because you don't need to turn down textures unless you're running out of VRAM. And I'm not running out of VRAM. I'm not even gonna bother testing this out because this is an utter disaster. I don't know, how low do you have to go before they'll turn off ray tracing? Look, ray tracing is still on here, although um, it's, it's at least turning off the reflections now. Look, 
I have to go way down here before they're going to turn off ray tracing. But they're also turning down things that don't need to be turned down, like the crowd density and the textures. Overall, I can say that this, um, at least in terms of this particular game, is a disaster. So I'm going to pop back in here and say that overall, I'm going to uninstall this program from my computer. I can tell you that the boost didn't do anything for me, but on a lower end system, this might be worth downloading and just giving it a shot if you're really low on RAM or your, your CPU bottlenecked. You could try it out. If it doesn't work well, uninstall the program. Um, this Booster Prime thing, at least for Cyberpunk, seems to make no sense at all. Um, I, I could look at what it might do in some of these other games, um, but I will say there's some positives here. One thing that I really like is that it's giving you a predicted frame rate. Um, now, how accurate that was, eh, but it was at least giving you a predicted frame rate. So, I don't know. You could try it out in other games, but here's the other thing I've got to say. The, the usefulness of the feature when it only has 10 games, and as we can see, in, in Cyberpunk, you might give the argument like, ah, well, it just didn't do well in that game. It's literally 10% of the supported games because there's only 10 of them. So, I'm not, you know, this is free. You could give it a shot. Try it out. Uh, it has the little deals thing, which, I mean, actually seem to be giving you some reasonable kind of comparison of, of games. Um, like, you can find it on different stores, like the Windows Stores theme, all of that. You could look for different games. I mean, that may, might be kind of a neat thing. But overall, I'm going to uninstall this from my computer. What do you guys think about it in the comment section? I do read all of the comments. Uh, subscribe if you're interested in PC tech news and reviews. And uh, thank you to my subscribers, you beautiful people. And as always, thank you to the people who click the join button to financially support what I'm doing here. You are even extra beautiful people. I hope that all of you have an excellent day.